Hey YouTube, I wanted to show my final version of automating decapping on this uh, Lee APP uh, press. I think this is running fairly well, fairly reliably. It's not trying to hammer itself apart. If you watch my other videos, I got the thing up to uh, probably 3,500 rounds an hour and eventually bent a, cap, a decapping pin because, of course, I did. Um, so things I've changed. This now is running the Lee APP decap kit, and it has uh, a decapping pin and a spring. And then down in here, the spring pushes on this little collar. And then this other piece with the fingers kind of protrudes down and it does a decent job of centering a case that doesn't get dropped quite perfect here. I did find though, you know, after a while this pusher piece can work itself forward and it can start setting these on this plate kind of crooked and it is possible to bend a decap pin. Uh, even with this Lee, so I'm definitely glad I've got a bunch of spare decap pins. So I've changed that, and that's definitely a worthwhile improvement. As a side plus, if I want to change calibers, I just have to swap out this one little piece here. Or, since I'm feeding it with a Dillon case feeder, I might have to switch to the uh, large pistol platter. And then the other thing I've changed. I swapped in this uh, Fonray double celluloid three-position valve that's open in the center. So now when I shut the power off, you know, before it would, uh, with a two-position valve, as soon as you de-energized it, it would uh, retract the cylinder, you know, regardless whether it was mid-stroke or what. Uh, or if, you know, something was jammed causing it to not want to retract, it would crash into that. So now with this uh, three-way valve, forward and retract, forward. as soon as I kill the power, it uh, opens both airlines to exhaust. Same as before, when you power it on, it's going to start in the retract position before it starts cycling. It's just now, if I shut it off, it stays wherever it was when I shut it off, and I can manually manipulate the air ram and same deal before I've got you know timer for extend and timer for retract I'm glad I went with an analog timer you know it's really easy to just give it a nudge of a tenth of a second one way or the other or some of the digital ones you know you'd have to piddle with uh, settings and most of them are set for one second or so so I'm finding you know 27 ish psi and uh, I've slowed it down quite a bit, thinking if it's reliable enough that you can let it uh, run on its own without having to babysit it, then it doesn't uh, need to be fast. Um, so that's sort of what I've got going on here. So the components uh, used here, the uh, you know, there's a 12 volt power supply there on the floor, running up, uh, to a generic uh, switch, I guess might as well go through the electric first. Single pole, single throw switch, and a little housing. Um, Autonics uh, ATS 11W13 timer. The one being the 12 volt version, and three meaning the uh, dial range goes up to three. And you could set it on one second, so you've got you know one to three second range there. And then the uh, valve that I ended up using is a Fonray 4V230E08. And uh, I don't know how they break down their code numbers, but basically it's a 12-volt double solenoid open in the middle uh, valve uh, with a one-quarter NPT uh, fittings for the airlines. And then the uh, these are just generic... Uh, full control mufflers with needles and they're uh they'd be one eighth 
NPT thread. And then of course I've got, I chose eight millimeter airline. So I've got, you know, uh, quarter NPT by eight millimeter angle adapter and straight line and whatnot. Oh, and uh, don't forget to get a uh, 11 pin uh, relay socket, the round socket for that. Again, don't do this at home. It's dangerous. I'm just kind of showing you what I've done. And then the air cylinder here. Um, that's a Festo DSNU 32250 PPVA. The PPV being the adjustable cushioning valves on both ends of the stroke. And the A, I think, indicates that it's a magnetic piston. So... That's pretty much it. You know, it runs uh, fairly good. Every now and then, you know, like I said, something will get jarred loose and it might break a pin, but uh, overall it's, you know, a time and labor saver now that it's to the point where I can be working on something else. I wouldn't leave this thing totally unattended, but I don't have to sit there and hover over the stop switch either. So, hope this is uh, helpful for somebody.